She had gone in the rain. She had been through the mud and it was almost up to her neck. Yep. And um, she finally reached this village and there was liquor everywhere, she noticed, and we kind of ended there. So we're gonna continue on with this chapter. Yeah. Mary went right to the chief's hut and gave him medicine. The witch doctor, disguised from head to foot with his face covered, lingered in the doorway, muttering threats. Chief Ochre felt a little better. Mary sent a runner for more medicine and stayed four days. At last, her prayers were answered and he recovered. How happy the villages, villagers were and how grateful. Ma, we want to learn book, they all said, meaning to read the Bible. Oh. Very well, but you must then do what the book says, Mary yes. told them. Right. <laughs> also, make peace with the people of Calabar. Do not kill the white traders. I will send you a teacher as soon as I can, someone to stay with you. Another village had opened to the gospel. Mary was doing the impossible, but God was behind it all. She went back to Aken. In her absence, her friend Chief Edom had been taken sick. Witchcraft, he mum mumbled to Mary as he tossed on his mat and the sweat poured over him. He had called the witch doctor and he had already taken prisoners to be killed at his death. Oh. How could you do this, Mary demanded. Witchcraft is a sin. You know better. You have God's word. You heard God's book and you promised me you would not go back to the old ways. Mm -hmm. Someone has put a spell on me, the chief insisted. Nonsense. You are sick because you have eaten dirty food or caught a chill. Mary gave him medicine and prayed. The prisoners <coughs> were tied up and held at a nearby farm to make sure Mary did not try to set them free. Soon they would have boiling oil poured over them oh. to make them confess, or they oh. would be made to chew the poisonous calabar bean. Oh Mary prayed for days. Chief Edom improved and to her surprise set the prisoners free. This had never before happened among tribes people. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> to celebrate the chief's recovery, the villagers ate food until they became sick. <laughs> they drank until they did many wicked things and fell down unconscious. Oh Mary stood and watched them helplessly. She shivered as she felt the presence of evil. Have I accomplished anything? She asked herself. They're, they're acting worse than before I came. But at least there would be no killing. She knew that people would not change their ways overnight. By now, Mary spoke several Nigerian tribal languages, and the people felt at home with her. But Mary still had met the worst chief of all, Nigeri. Chief Nigeri and his men all trooped into a king one noon and drank so much beer that they began stabbing each other and didn't know it. Oh. The people of a king were afraid to say anything. Mary watched a while, then decided to stop the fighting. She pushed her way through the crowd of men, grabbed Chief Najiri's <laughs> arm, and shouted, Go home now! Can you imagine a little lady going out to <laughs> big scary men? <laughs> that must have been quite something. She had the Lord behind her. The chief peered down at the little woman hanging onto his arm. With one slash of his long knife, he could slit her throat. With one heavy foot, he could kick her down, and with his huge hands, break her neck. He could shoot her in the head, but he didn't do any of these things. He let Mary lead him out of the village, down the path toward his home. She followed to make sure they would really go. They stumbled on quietly enough until Najiri suddenly cried, Witchcraft! Mary hurried up behind him and leaned over his shoulder as he stooped down on the path. There was a broken piece of banana plant with a circle of nuts around it and an empty coconut shell to the right. Don't go near it! Witchcraft! The chief was actually trembling and Mary saw his heart thump under his painted chest. Wow. It's nothing, she began, but the chief interrupted. The people in the last village did it! Let's go back and punish them! He and his men plunged back down the trail toward a small village they had just passed. Mary took a shortcut and sped through the jungle to warn the little village. She reached it before Najiri and his men did. She stood blocking their way. No one in this village is guilty of anything, she said. Now you just march right back the way you came. <laughs> the, men co the man complained loudly, but obeyed her. <laughs> Once again, they came to the broken banana plant in the path and refused to pass it. 
<laughs> I'll show you what foolishness your witchcraft is. Mary yanked up the banana plant and kicked the shells off into the bush. She carried the plant over her shoulder. Now, my brave warriors, go home to your village. I shall take this home and plant it in my own backyard. <laughs> the men backed off, marveling at the courage of the white ma. But Mary had not heard the last of the witchcraft. Mm. The very next morning, a man from Chief Najiri came running into a king. Give me that little broken banana plant for medicine, he cried. Chief Najiri is very sick. And small wonder, snapped Mary. After yesterday's drinking party, she knew they wanted the banana plant to make a charm. Chief Edom stepped out. You must give it to them, Ma, or they will make war on us. Helplessly, Mary handed over the banana plant. There were times when she could not insist upon having her own way. Soon another runner came to a king. Chief Najiri is preparing for war, terrible war. Mary went to her hut and fell on her knees. She could not think of anything else to do. Oh God, she prayed, I have tried so hard. I tried everything. Now I realize I cannot do it. You are the only one who can stop the war. Yeah. While she was still praying, a third runner appeared. The chief is feeling better and there will be no war, he announced. Wow. Mary went to bed that night in great relief. She never understood what happened except that God himself prevented the yeah. war. Amen. Amen. The people are so slow to change, Mary wrote home. I sometimes think I haven't done any good at all. If only the people of Okuyan could learn a trade to keep them busy. They could be carpenters and farmers. <clears throat> Later, thanks to Mary's hard work, a trade school was started for the young people of Calabar. Chief Edom and a king had long promised to build Mary a house of her own. Every time Mary suggested they start, the people said, Tomorrow! Tomorrow! <laughs> At last, Mary decided to build it herself. Oh. She began making mud bricks, drying them, and clearing the brush for a yard. Wow. When the people saw her doing a man's job under the hot sun, they were ashamed and all pitched in to help. Soon it was finished. How wonderful to have a little place all her own. Wow. It was a fine house. Mary had two very large rooms of dried mud and rainproof roof of woven palm leaves. She had a seven foot wide porch protected by a roof. She had shelves and a wooden bed with a deerskin cover. There was an indoor fireplace with an outside stone chimney like the one she had seen in Dundee. Hanging from pegs were her few dishes, a jug, some cooking pots, and a large kettle. Her mm. books were on a bookshelf. Never had the people of a king seen anything so marvelous as Mary's house, <coughs> though we would think it poor and crude, of course, over here. Word spread through all the Okuyan area that the white ma now lived in a palace. A faraway <laughs> chief journeyed through the jungle four days just to see Mary's house. <laughs> At the village of Ifako, the chief had promised Mary a church, but always he said, tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> when she would mention it. Then he heard Mary had a house in a king, and he felt ashamed. One day he sent for her, and Mary went to Afako. The chief pointed, See, here's the ground I have set aside for you. Shall we start the church today? <laughs> Mary rejoiced as the people all worked hard cutting wooden posts and beams. Mm -hmm. When it was finished, the church was 25 feet wide and 33 feet long. Oh, wow. The walls of dried mud and the roof of palm leaves. Wow. The floors of seats were of dried mud, but everything was swept <coughs> clean. Mm -hmm. Mary stayed that Sunday for the first service and felt it should be something very special. Mm -hmm. What could she do? She remembered a box of clothing from the church back home where she had never, which she had never opened. She had the box brought to Afako and gave everyone a piece of clothing. Mm -hmm. Of course, nothing matched. The clothes were all sizes and colors. Some mm -hmm. got a jacket, others trousers, some got a skirt, a scarf, a top hat. But the villagers were as happy as children. <laughs> Don't bring weapons into God's house, Mary warned them. So the men left their guns outside. What a colorful crowd it was. <laughs> Mary taught them a hymn, then spoke of Jesus' love. Uh -huh. She could see the change on the faces as they believed. Later, many of them told her they were no longer afraid of evil spirits. Mm -hmm. No longer did they believe in witchcraft. Uh -huh. And next time, we'll learn what happens when a leopard stalks Mary and her children. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my.